Sorry if I seem a little shaky. I'm a bit wired at the moment. Now that the bad joke is out of the way, let's talk about cable management. First off, do you need it? No, of course not. Should you do it, though? Sure, if you are cable and ready. But why, though? Well, inside of a computer, people will tell you that cables gone wild will provide more surface area for dust to settle on. Which is pretty true, but that doesn't really affect much. They'll also say cables run amok will restrict airflow, but I would only consider that to be an issue if you have either a really tiny case or a wacky bonkers crazy amount of cable clutter. The primary reason for cable bondage is aesthetics. If you're okay with your setup looking like cousin IT, then that's fine. The second good reason for cable management is ease of access. You might not necessarily want to go digging through a bird's nest every time you want to swap something out. We'll discuss this in three sections. First up is your desk. A clean desk is a happy desk, and a happy desk is the start of a happy you. Or something. To manage the catastrophe here, the first step is to acquire these adhesive hooks and clips I found at Target and Amazon respectively, double-sided 3M tape, and twist ties. I'm not a huge fan of zip ties. I don't think I'm ready for that kind of commitment. I know there are reusable ones, but... But shut up. The last few things you might want to consider are extension cables for things like power, USB, and audio. Everything I use will be linked in the description below. Even before thinking about cables, figure out how you want your desk to look. Where are you going to put your monitors? What about your speakers? Your tower? Do you need USB ports or a memory card reader nearby? Maybe an audio jack that won't cut across your keyboard. Figure out where you want those and what you need to put where to accommodate that. For example, my smartwatch, tablet, webcam, and Scarlett Solo are all where I want them, and they all require a USB connection to either charge, transfer data, or otherwise. But some of the cables are too short to reach my PC. Even if they weren't, that's four USB ports taken up. Some other boards don't even have that many. However, they are all long enough to tickle this sort of middle right section of my desk. So I have a USB hub and a USB extension cable. The hub is Velcroed to the desk and I use the extension cable to occupy but a single USB port. That's four peripherals taken care of. Same deal for everything else. Drop your monitors, keyboards, mice, speakers, computers, and cats down and figure out a general area where all related cables will reach. If you can't make it work, separate them. In this case, my monitors, Amazon Dot, speakers, and LED strips suck on the teat of a power strip fixed to my monitor mount, and everything else is handled by another power strip taped to the bottom of my desk. You can add as many power or USB hubs as you want, but I don't really recommend daisy chaining these more than once. That's when you bring in the extensions to clean up everything else. After planning out where you want the cables, it's time to start laying them down. Order is important. This is the ease of access that I mentioned earlier, especially if you just plan on bunching them up. Power cables to monitors, computers, and anything you may not swap out too often can be bundled together and twist-tied. After that, I suggest adding cables and more twist ties to the bunch in order of least likely to be changed to most likely. Staggering twist ties is okay too, since you can buy like 500 of these for about $6. And this way, if you need to swap something out, you don't need to release Cthulhu to wreak havoc on your face. And if your cable girth is too much for a single twist tie to handle, you can twist tie the twist ties together. If your desk has a backboard, you're probably free to just drop the cables down, but I would still drop them in order to prevent tangles if you need to swap them out later. If you want to be a little more anal than that, you can still apply the bundling strategy, but to the backboard instead of the bottom. And if you want to go even deeper than that, you can split each cable into its own little route, which could look really nice, and it would be super easy to figure out which cable goes to what, but that's also super tedious and time consuming. And you'll need a hell of a lot of these little clips. If you find your cable is far too thick for these little clips to handle, you can wrap a twist tie around the cable and clip the twist tie instead. If you end up with cables in excess, you can kind of loop them up and bunch them back into the main cable highway. Then keep it contained with more twist ties. After you've got most of the cables bundled up, you can start fixing them to the desk. I use these adhesive hooks to take care of the main channel and these smaller clips to handle the little roads. As for connecting the entire system to a main socket, you can hope your desk is close to a wall outlet, plug in there, and hide it with a wall cover or even behind the desk's leg if you so choose. Or, in my case, I'm using this barf-inducing solution because I have a standing desk and I need the extra slack. Now what about the things that sit atop your desk, like your keyboard, your mouse, and your mouse pad? You could drill a hole in your desk and route the cables through that, but I'm not about that life. This method does not work for me since I often move my keyboard to shoot b-roll and or stuff my face. You can utilize USB pass-throughs in hopes of keeping cables localized, but my current solution, not necessarily an elegant one, is passing them under my microphone preamp processor, 
which can be substituted for a monitorizer if you have one of those instead, and behind and around my speakers. And what about behind your computer? You can choose to use a cable sleeve to keep them all bunched up, but I personally just let them hang. I swap out peripherals a lot and the sleeve would be more of a nuisance than anything else. Plus, I can't see it from where I work anyway, you probably can't either. So, the biggest tip I can give is to use what non-visible space you can from where you sit, like throwing your power strip on your monitor mount. Don't have a monitor mount? Tape it to the back of your monitor instead. You'll probably want it centered though so you don't get any funny tilt. So, that's the desk covered. Next up is the main chamber of your PC. Many newer cases make this super easy, either through grommets near power supplies and main access points on the motherboard, or with partitions that can hide an entire body, or both. On the flip side, some cases make this even more difficult by putting clear panels everywhere. For the main compartment, your 24-pin and 8-pin cables usually don't show very much since they can be routed behind the motherboard tray and the actual connection on the motherboard is typically close to those exit grommets. SATA data and power cables are often in similar situations, as well as front I.O. and USB headers. The trickier ones tend to be the fans, usually because of fan header locations on the motherboard. My advice here is to orient the fan so that the cable is closest to an exit point on the motherboard tray. This helps with routing the cable and will allow for more of the cable's length to be utilized. A fan hub is helpful for keeping them all centralized, but if you don't have one of those, you can reroute them back to the motherboard and try to keep as little cable visible as possible. For the cable that is visible, try to keep it straight, since that helps it blend in a little bit better. Now for behind the motherboard tray, which may not even be a plick cable to some of you. Generally speaking, as long as the panel doesn't flex when you try to put it back on, I'm a happy camper. However, if you have a transparent side panel for the business end of things, you may want to consider being a little tidier than that. My general rules for here are just about the same as for the desk. Any component least likely to be replaced goes down first, with the exception of the 24 pin. More on that in a bit. Front I.O. connectors tend to be the toughest because they have a fairly large distance to travel, and those only get replaced if you swap out your case. So, those almost always go down first. After that, it really depends on what you swap out most frequently. Things like hard drives and SSDs have pretty long lifespans, as well as fans and coolers. While graphics cards also last many years, these are usually the components that get swapped out most frequently because new games are always coming out and they usually demand more and more juice. So these go second from the top for me. The very top cable is the 24 pin and that's entirely for aesthetics. You don't need to limit yourself to one cable channel if you don't want to. Utilize your tie down points, twist ties, zip ties, whatever. There are vendors like Cable Mod that provide custom cables or extensions for your power supplies if you really want or need them. Get creative, cable management nowadays is becoming more and more like an art. And art is subjective. What works for me may not work for you, and vice versa. Hopefully this video has sparked some ideas and will help you direct your very own cable porn. So that's all I have to say about that. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you have a better solution for something I mentioned in here. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven and I am a little dim. Bye bye. Do you need it? What was that? My voice. I forgot to ready myself beforehand, but my voice correct anyway, so I gotta redo it anyway. That was really bad. If you don't want to drown in a... Oh, that's right. I was supposed to put something clever there, and I didn't. And now I... Ugh. Let's move that cup. Don't need people seeing what I drink. You can split each a... E oh, each able. That doesn't even make sense. And clip the twist tie instead. I think my voice cracked. Why does it keep cracking? <sighs> I'm losing my voice. I'm getting like, I am sick, but now the voice is starting to go. And I've been getting a lot of people telling me that my voice sounds really soothing. After this video, they're going to change their mind. I am using this barf inducing solution. Inducing. Inducing. That's an inducy. Say to data and psst, say to data. Say to data. That's fun to say to data. That's fun to say to data. Say to data. Generally speaking, as long as the cable, not cable, panel, as long as the panel doesn't flex, the cable is always going to flex because it's a goddamn cable. Applicable. Cable? Cable? Applicable? Applicable. Applicable would make it more obvious, but then it would make it more obvious, and I think people would listen to that and be like, uh. Which is kind of like half the point, I think. Hmm. Uh. I don't know what that is, but I think I did this in the bedroom once. Pretty sure they didn't like it. Just about the same as the. the, the
I need you to pretend to be something. Why are you wet? Ugh. There you go. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, all right. <coughs> Did you know I'm allergic to cats? What are you? He's hugging me.